What's going on YouTube? Or Storm here coming at you guys with a new discussion video today. Something that's kind of been on my mind over the last few weeks, which is um the like this sh the sheepish way com the community in Yu-Gi-Oh follows the top players and just does what they do with and will use any and uses weird justifications for a lot of these uh reasons. So, um if you guys um didn't know, if you remember from last weekend, the ARG, Jeff Jones actually managed to t win the whole thing with TDDs. There were some questionable plays, definitely for sure. I, um, cheating allegations were a thing, but um, Jeff was um, pretty honest uh, when the uh, DDD group about it. He said um, he didn't do it intentionally. Now, um, obviously, um, he must have been pretty out of it if he thought you could use Genghis, um, DDD Flame King Genghis, off of a crystal wing summon but you know it's up to you guys to debate that but that's not why the main thing is i'm noticing a lot of uh, ddd players are already um using concepts from his build they're main decking dd crow now why that's actually a really good question why um dd crow is, is i'm not saying dd crow is a good or bad card it's definitely a good card um but especially considering now one thing jeff said in his uh, video was he didn't have a chance to test uh, dd crow with somewhere arf though which is searchable by where Arf though it's a very common card used in DDD decks because you efficiently basically play um, 13 level ones between your gate searches, your between your gate, between your um, between gate, between one for one, between your nine level nines. You effectively basically have this uh, just as high a percentage as Zodiacs do of opening Molmarat. So um, that's one of the reasons why a lot of uh, some DDD players in the OCG would tech like one more Arf though and tech a DD Crow. And tech a um, they tech a DD Crow or tech a good effect failure because it's searchable and it and um, but all of a sudden Jeff people didn't miss, seem to miss that when that what Jeff said about that um, and now a lot of DDD players are already main decking DD Crow just because Jeff did now is DD Crow a good card absolutely um, would you would um, definitely in the DDD mirror, it, being able to banish the key resource can put your opponent in a really big predicament. That's one of the things with DDDs is that if you interrupt one play, it can really put your opponent in a bit of a pickle. And that's one of the reasons why, um, the card's always, the card's always been good. It kind of phases in and out of formats, but there's no doubt the card is good, um, for sure. The thing with, the problem with, um... The thing is, I notice is that people are already doing it just because he did it, and I just think that my advice to all Yu-Gi-Oh players is that you can't net decking. I have absolutely zero problems with net decking. I think it's perfectly fine um, to do in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. I think it, but the thing is, you shouldn't just do something because a top player does it, um, and that's one of the reasons why. Um, was one of the reasons why um, I think that people you need to think about why you're making certain card choices with um, rather than just doing it because the top players do so. Um, so it's one of the things that I I mean, and the other big example is in the Metal Foes groups. I actually posted my GoFu um, my GoFu Metal Foe list to the uh, group because I took it to a regional not too long ago, and I, obviously I didn't perform as well as I would have liked. You know, I had I had a lot of misplays, I, and you know, totally awesome as a card, but nevertheless, a lot of people said, "Oh, you're bad for not playing the Billy Break uh, Clee list." As far people would go as far to say um, stuff like, um, "Oh, go, oh, you're you should play the just play the Billy Break build." Um, but the problem with, um, the thing is, is that they would go as far to say the Klee engine wasn't, was, um, the, when Billy Break won Botchum, he obviously wasn't playing GoFu, he was playing the Klee engine. But the thing is, is that people went from saying that it was an expensive gimmick to saying it was good, it was, people went from saying it was an expensive gimmick to saying that it was not, it was a good card. And I just don't understand to saying that it was quote more explosive, which I always never really understood the concept of that. I mean, the 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 Klee engine is it is it more consistent than standard GoFu Metal Foes? Yes, because you're playing you know full cult cannon, you're playing three summoners art, so it's a little bit more consistent. But saying it's more explosive is really really pushing it, in uh, my humble opinion. And um, the main reason why um, 
Now, I understand why it's, it is more consistent, but there's no, I just don't understand why Yu-Gi-Oh! players simply flip from one thing to another. And it really just... It really just annoys me that a lot of player that a lot of players just will instantly um flip on like on a play just because a top player did it. Now as far as now there is some merit to play to but the thing is is that always the main thing the theme of this video is while I, I think judging well you while well you can judge by what a top player does, you also need to understand that just because they do it doesn't necessarily mean that it's better or good or whatever. It just means that that um, you're gonna have. I my advice always to players is that realize that you should not. While net decking, I think is fine. You also shouldn't just build something a certain way just because the top players do it. So that about comes to the end of the video today. I hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. Let me know you you guys think of the, in this in the comment section down below. And as always, like thank you guys for watching. It's Orstorm signing out.